working with metal coating bronze C and Tiffany green. In this video, we're going to show you the basics of using the metal coating C version. And if you haven't already taken a look at our primate and metal coating B version, now's a good opportunity to see where we left off. To start, we'll take the entire big portion of this metal coating C and dump it into a container. We'll get that mixed up real good, and then we'll start adding our catalyst and hardener. Although we're using the entire container, you can portion this out if you so choose. Just remember, if you use half of the big container, use half of the small containers. What we're using here is just a little adapter for the drill. We want to set it on a slow but steady pace and slowly add the catalyst and hardener. Once everything's added in, we can pick up the speed a little bit to ensure a good blend. As mentioned in other videos, we should strain this before using it. And here we'll show you why you need to strain. You can see all the little particulates that just couldn't quite fit through. Those won't fit through your gun either, so it's good to just get them out now. While two coats is minimum for the metal coating C, it's generally a good idea to do more. You may recognize the bird and whale from the metal coating B version video. So you already know we have about two or three coats on this. For the C, we're going to go back over and add three more coats. And here we added our Tiffany green. And this is only about an hour afterwards that you see this reaction. Remember to patina while the metal coating is still wet. That's how you get your best reaction. If you wait until it's dry, it'll be a little too late and it just doesn't come out looking as good. While the patina will start reacting pretty quick, generally you want to wait a couple days before burnishing it. The patina will continue to keep reacting even though the metal coating is dry when you're using a patina like the Tiffany Green. On this patina process, I went a little bit thicker than I needed to for both the bird and the whale. Because I went thicker on the patina, I know I'll probably have some runs later on once the patina is developed, but I plan on burnishing both these pieces pretty heavily so the runs won't bother me much. If you don't plan on burnishing the metal coatings, you may want to go a little bit lighter on the patina to ensure that you don't get runs. To get the best burnishing possible, you can use 1-aught steel wool and move up into 4-aught steel wool. In this, however, we went with 4-aught steel first with this bird. And the reasoning behind that was at first I was thinking it would be very cool to have it look just a little green in the recesses, and kind of aged bronze on top and then I decided that I wanted to burnish it even more and have it really polished. Essentially I created more work for myself because I didn't start with the one knot and move myself up. As you can see you can really get after it. It's not going to damage the patina or the metal coating if you're planning to burnish it with steel wool. The metal coatings are very durable. The C version is very hard because of the catalyst and hardener. That's why we're able to polish. You wouldn't be able to do this on the B version. While safety precautions are recommended for all of our products, you can see very clearly right there on the cardboard why a mask is so required. The last thing you want to do is inhale any of that steel wool coming off or even the powder from the Tiffany Green. Make sure that you have ventilation, gloves, eye protection, and most importantly, a mask. We've done dry burnishing up to this point. Now we're going to show you what happens when you put a little bit of water on it. This is still 4 out steel wool, and we're just going to put a little bit of water and lightly burnish it as well. Essentially what this does is it pulls off the patina faster, while not burnishing the metal quite as much. It's going to give us a slightly different look once it's dried, 
and it's just going to make it so the bird stands out a little bit more away from the log that it's sitting on. And here we're going to air hose to ensure that we get all of the steel wool off, and then we can clear coat it. We're going to use the ClearGuard EF mat to seal this in. The nice thing about the EF version, that's the environmentally version, is that it keeps those greens as vibrant as possible. They'll darken immediately when you get them wet, but as soon as they dry out in about an hour, about 80% of it comes back and the remainder comes back over the next couple of days. This part of the video was sped up five times. For this whale, I went with 2 aught steel wool and then went in with 4 aught steel wool. The 2 aught will do most of the work as far as removing the patina and the base layer, but the 4 aught will polish that up right quick. I'm sure some of you are asking yourselves, why did he patina when he just pulled all of it off? Well, it's about subtleties. In the recesses, you'll find the green. But as an overall, there's a certain aged look that comes with adding that patina and burnishing it off. We could have just left it as the C version and polished that, but adding the patina adds a touch of realism. I've now switched to the 4 aught steel wool, and now you'll start seeing a big difference. Whereas with the 2 aught, yeah, it was polishing it, but now with 4 aught, we're really getting a nice shine on this pulling off some of that gray that's left behind, really doing some work now. And again, we're going to seal this in with the ClearGuard EF mat to ensure that we keep some of those greens in the recesses. And here we have our finished pieces. Our bronze sea metal coating, followed by Tiffany green, and then ClearGuard EF mat. Metal coating, bronze sea, Traditional Tiffany Green and ClearGuard EF Matte are all available at www.sculptnouveau.com.